So just a reminder that this week we have a test. That date should be on your calendar. And you should have a reminder set to do the pretest the day before. It's usually open the two days before, but it is due the day before. Make sure you complete that pretest. Now we've already looked at rational expressions. Today we want to look specifically at rational functions. And remember, when we have a rational function, we're going to say that the r of x is equal to the p of x divided by q of x. p and q are both polynomial functions. And q, actually I used an uppercase. Let's do that again. And the q of x, of course, the denominator cannot equal 0. So remember that the domain for our rational function is the set of all real numbers except, except those for which the denominator equals zero. And we know that already. We looked at finding domain restrictions. So any numbers, any values of x that make the denominator equal zero are not permitted. We have some notes on that in week one. So if you want to go back and do a quick review, you can. But here we go. Why don't you find the domain for the r of x and the m of x? Write the domain in both set notation and interval notation. So remembering that we're just looking at the denominator, the denominator cannot equal 0. So we see that x cannot equal negative 5. I always find it easiest, especially for interval notation, to draw that on the number line because I can see the two intervals I have here. Of course, we have an open circle because x cannot equal negative 5. If you haven't already done so, find the domain for the m of x. For the m of x, we're again looking at the denominator. The denominator cannot equal 0. I used the square root method here. And of course, you had to remember when you take the square root of both sides, you need the positive and negative root. We're using open brackets because x cannot equal negative 2 or positive 2. Two more examples. Why don't you find the domain for the j of x and the g of x? Again, we were looking at the denominator. The denominator cannot equal 0. But this was a sum of squares, not a difference of squares. It's never going to equal 0 because x squared will never equal negative 1. This means there are no restrictions. And the domain is the set of all real numbers. And for our last example, we again look at the denominator. The denominator cannot equal 0. And so we factored the trinomial and found two restrictions. x cannot equal negative 1 half or 3. And there you see it written using both set notation and interval notation.